This time, folks, we're going to talk about nova. Um, the word nova in Latin means new. And when astronomers first saw a nova, um, it was something that it was a star that was just very, very dim or a star they had never seen. And then overnight or over the period of a couple days, it would go from being very, very dim to something incredibly large and incredibly bright. So what a nova is, these are old stars that brighten very, very quickly within a few days or weeks. They last for a few months or a few years, and then they go away. So it was, as you can imagine, in hundreds and hundreds of years ago, um, these are one of those things that were pro that were used to foretell disaster or something major was going to occur. Um, people have even suggested that perhaps the star of Bethlehem was a nova, was a new star that came to life and then went, went down again. How do we explain this process of an old star becoming very, very bright, lasting for a few weeks or days and months and then going away again? Well, we have to go back to the idea that more than 50% of all stars are in multi-star systems. Our star will not go nova. Our sun is not going to go nova. And the reason is because in order to have a nova, you have to be in a multi-star system. You have to have a couple stars that are near each other. Our current understanding of what a nova is, is this. If you have two stars that are close together, um, for example, if you have a red giant and you have perhaps a white dwarf, remember that two stars are going to orbit a common center. If this is the large star and this is the small star, they're probably both going to oscillate around that common center. And that means they're gravitationally bound and they're very, very close together. Well, what occurs is this. Um, the red giant star and there's the white dwarf star. So this is where we think uh, Nova come from. You have a red giant star and a white dwarf star that are near each other. There is a mathematical point in space which is known as the Lagrange point. Um, when you, la, la, uh, I said that wrong, Lagra I always call it Lagrange point and perhaps I'm mispronouncing it, sorry. When they hit that point, that is the point where gravity is balanced between the two. The gravitational tug between those two stars is totally and completely balanced. Well, as a red giant star starts to expand, it will pass a point in space which where it passes that Lagrange point and it will actually reach a place where the gravitational tug of the white dwarf is bigger than the t gravitational tug of the original red giant. Now, when matter expands past that point in space, the little white dwarf is going to get a very quick and fast influx of matter. So you had a happy little retired white dwarf. It's just sitting there doing its thing. And all of a sudden, this red giant expands and expands and expands so that the matter all of a sudden gets to the point where it dumps a whole mass of matter into the white dwarf. When that huge collection of hydrogen from the outer reaches of the red giant gets gravitationally attracted to the white dwarf, it's kind of like throwing a paper, bait, a paper plate onto a burning bonfire. The bonfire is is dying. It's the end of the evening. You've been sitting around it for hours and you go to clean up at the end of the bonfire and you throw some stuff on the bonfire like a paper plate. It burns up really, really quickly. It does not burn up very, very hot and it does not burn for long, but very quickly it produces a big flare of light and heat. And when it produces this huge flare of light and heat, the star does because of this influx of hydrogen gas, it starts to shine very, 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 very brightly. And that bright shine due to the increased addition of matter is called a nova. And 
it can become very, very bright for a very short period of time. Now, as I mentioned, our sun will not do this because we do not have a companion star. But more than 50% of the stars out there are in multiple star systems, and so this is going to occur. Now, I kind of left right here and didn't describe this much. But there is a mathematical shape, and it's called a Roche lobe. A Roche lobe is where the gravity of one star starts to influence the gravi gravity of another. And each one of these, of these lobes or circles is the place where the force of gravity is dominated by one object or another. So within this first lobe, the force of gravity of this star is going to pull everything through it. And in the second lobe, the force of gravity in this circle is going to pull everything through it. The point where those forces of gravity are equal or where those regions intersect, intersect is called the Lagrange point. The Lagrange point there, um, when this red giant expands and expands and expands and expands to it gets beyond that Lagrange point, some of the matter from that red giant is going to get sucked in to that white dwarf, which starts the process of producing a nova. All right. That's going to finish our discussion of NOVA. Um, we'll come back, and next time we're going to start talking about the heavyweights, what happens to big stars.